Welcome to Dear Sandy. I'm Sandy Galef, a member of the New York State Assembly, representing parts of Northern Westchester and parts of Putnam County. And today we're going to be talking about how you can get some help. And it could be help for you, members of your family, uh, your neighbors, your friends, or just people that you've met in the community. And I have two wonderful guests with me today that are going to talk about how through their agencies um, that they, they work for us in, in uh, Westchester and Putnam and, and basically the region. So I'd first like to introduce way over on this side, Naomi Adler, who's the uh, Chief Executive Officer of the United Way. It's great to have you here, Naomi. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, it's great. And Donna Bastero, who is the Executive Director for Caring for the Homeless of Peekskill. But I know you said it's not just Peekskill, it, it goes beyond yes, the borders um, of Peekskill. Yes, we have a lot in Northern Westchester, so thank you for having me. Right, right. And you both do such such good work. Let's talk about the United Way. And um, I've actually been involved with the United Way for dozens and dozens and dozens of years. Not, yeah. not to the same extent that I was a long time ago, but I know um, the type of work that the United Way does and really trying to raise dollars to give to a lot of different agencies, but also kind of studying the problems. I think this is the new component part of it and trying to figure out how to think in the future and what needs to be done, you know, what the problems are here in the future. Tell us a little bit about what United Way is doing right now. Sure. Well, your United Way actually um, is part of a huge network. We're the largest charity in the world. There's a United Way in every zip code, including every one of them in Westchester and Putnam. And our idea is to make sure that everything we do is super local. So yes, we do a survey um, every three to five years of what's going on in all kinds of areas, education, income, and health. And when we talk about education, it's early education all the way through until getting ready for college. And income has to do with financial stability, homelessness, food insecurity issues, and of course health is everything in the gamut from mental health to physical mm -hmm. health. And um, what we do after we survey the community is to make sure that everything that we've raised from local community groups to companies that have employee giving drives is used in the best way possible all within that year so that we can, as we talk about all the time, make sure that every single person is helped. Part of what we do also is to run United Way's 211 helpline so that mm -hmm. people can call 211 or they can access um, the most comprehensive database of all kinds of services across the entire Hudson Valley in order to find uh, help for whatever need it might be. Have you found over this period of time um, the issues are the same or are they changing? Are, do we correct problems that we have and then we go on to, to, to find another problem? You know, what are, what are some of the things that you see, the patterns? There is always a pattern of need when it comes to basic needs, affordable housing, hunger. Those are needs, unfortunately, that continue. And although mm -hmm. there are little band-aids here and there, um, really the most important thing is to make sure that we are a support network for the food pantries as well as the food banks and, of course, that we're helping people help people um, get what they need. Um, we're into efficient service, and yes, we have found that there's progress when we all work together. Um, so for instance, many more people know where to get help by calling 211 and accessing United Way um, than they did 15 years ago, for instance, where the number one need in all of those surveys were, was, I don't know where to get help. Mm -hmm. Now, the answer is, I know I can go to the United Way, what's the next step? Uh, and so very often it's that we're leading them to some of the initiatives that we are um, embarking to prevent some of the major issues. Mm -hmm. So for instance, we have an initiative called Teach Me to Fish, Work Skills for Life, where we're empowering people to go into careers where they really can get their basic needs met and they're um, able to pay their rent and they're able to um, pay for food, where in the past they may have been in a job where it just didn't lead them to that kind of path. That's very interesting. That, that's a whole new, that, that's a new prong of what United Way is doing with the education part yeah. of it. Yeah, and in a lot of our education work we're focusing on K through 4 because most of the surveys have said that our children are, um, they're losing days of school. 
uh, and they're dropping out earlier and we're also mm -hmm. finding that the literacy rates are going down. So one of the programs that we're doing is uh, making sure that kids are actually staying in school and that they have less absent days. If you, you know, first graders, if they lose nine or more days of school are more likely mm -hmm. to drop out. So a lot of what we're doing is trying to help after school so that they're academically secure and also mm -hmm. to make sure that our homeless population, the children that are in the shelters, get to school. Mm -hmm. We work very hard to make sure that they have all the supports that they need so that they're successful. Yeah. So Donna, we're, we're talking about the homeless population now. Is this, um, so tell us about your agency. What, what are some of the services that you provide? Sure. Um, well, we have a uh, shelter for both what we call our residential uh, clients as well as an emergency overnight uh, shelter um, service explain. that we provide. Okay, explain. I think people can understand the overnight. That is just somebody that would be on the street, I suppose, that night, and, and you find a bed? Yes. Uh, but tell us about what, what is the residential? So the residential uh, is a transitional shelter stay uh, for those residents that are connected to DSS, which is the Department of Social Services in Westchester County. Mm -hmm. And these are folks that are homeless. Uh, sometimes they've come to us through the emergency service overnight. Uh, sometimes they've already gone to DSS in White Plains to seek help or Peekskill. DSS has an office in Peekskill on Washington Street. And they will have made their way there, uh, explained that they're homeless, and they will be referred to our shelter, uh, providing we have the beds available for them and they can stay with us while we try to assist them and get them connected to critical services um, to enable them to ultimately lead independent lives. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we connect them to you know, medical services, we connect them to educational services, we connect them to services um, for housing uh, and we try to, while they're there, determine what is the barriers that are existing for these folks that are preventing mm -hmm. them from um, leading independent lives in their own homes um, and obviously being able to form relationships with others to live in those mm -hmm. homes as well. What, what triggered in most instances their homelessness? Is there a factor that's, you know, a thread for, for many people? Well, I w you know, that's an interesting uh, question and it has changed, I think, over time and I think the face of homelessness has changed over time. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have seen in Westchester County a huge spike and increase in homelessness in families who have been able to sustain but were always one paycheck away from falling mm -hmm. into homelessness. And certainly the lack of affordable housing has been a big issue for those in Westchester County that have fallen into homelessness, you know, combined with the economic uh, issues that our country has mm -hmm. been facing these last years. But certainly folks have fallen into homelessness for a variety of reasons. Some are, you know, veterans that had fallen on hard times. We work with a lot of veterans to try to, you know, get them housed mm -hmm. and back to independent living that have come home with a lot of issues that they were facing. There's, um, as I said, the families that are trying to support children while at the same time feed those children. Um, and we in Westchester County sometimes forget the hardships that are faced by many of our citizenry here in Westchester County. So let me put it into context mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, the average two-bedroom apartment in Westchester County is $1,850 a month. Mm -hmm. It takes mm -hmm. four minimum wage jobs to be able to afford that. Um, there are an, a number of single-family households uh, in Westchester County. Um, many of them are um, led by women um, and those children that are in those households you know really need to have their own bedroom and so we're talking about the average uh, family needs at least a two-bedroom apartment so if we're talking about that with the minimum wage jobs um, it is extremely difficult and most of their pay is going towards housing so there's not that much money for anything else so for instance if you need a car to get to work or if you have to pay mm -hmm. for a bus or whatever it may be to mm -hmm. get to work which most of us do or if um, you have child care because the only yeah. way you can work is to get some assistance with your children. Absolutely. Right. I don't know, you don't have any money to be able you to do that. You don't have enough money, you're, you're absolutely money. right. 
Yeah, and so if one of those things happens, your car needs to get fixed or your child care goes up mm -hmm. or you have to deal with any other emergent issue, health care might be, um, you're finding yourself in a precarious situation. And so that's mm -hmm. what we're seeing. We're seeing more and more um, people who have never had that happen to them where they're mm -hmm. on the brink of becoming homeless or they're on the brink of being what we call insecu food insecurity. Um, mm -hmm. And hunger and homelessness is growing in Westchester mm -hmm. County. Uh, what was the, re I mean, the recession started 2008. Um, you know, I, I, we see better signs today of, of what's happening, but, but has that had an impact on all of your work? The, um, you know? Um, yes. I mean, the number of phone calls that are coming in to United Ways 211 uh, and the database searches we're getting this month alone, we got 2,200 calls when normally we're around 1,800. Um, mm -hmm. And most of them are for basic needs and for help with everything that you can think of that, that encompasses mm -hmm. basic needs. Um, but we're also seeing that um, it's longer term. You know, everything coupled. Think about mm -hmm. Superstorm Sandy and how right. people used um, their precious savings to replace the food that they had lost. Right. And that sort of snowballs into a year mm -hmm. later, here we are looking at people who don't have savings to deal with some of the issues that are coming up with regard to housing increases or yeah. um, food prices are increasing. Although they say the economy is getting better, we're not seeing that with regard to food and we certainly haven't seen mm -hmm. gas mm -hmm. prices go way down. So um, I think over the last few years it has gotten progressively worse, but it's also one year coupled to, with another year that mm -hmm, makes it more mm -hmm, difficult for mm -hmm. people to live. And we've been seeing um, an increase in the number of families we're feeding at the Choice Food Pantry because we also mm -hmm, have a Choice mm -hmm. Food Pantry. Um, and that has spiked anywhere between 110 families to 155 families. And we expect to see that sustained because we've been mm -hmm. seeing it now at least for the past mm -hmm. year. So the recession has been hitting people hard in mm -hmm. Westchester mm -hmm. County. Um, and we see still people coming to our breakfast soup kitchen program that would otherwise not have food. And there's been children coming to that as mm -hmm. well. So um, I, think that, I think that's correct that what we've seen is that there's been a ripple effect. Um, there's not always an understanding of how that impacts uh, people in what is usually termed or referred to as wealthy counties, but we mm -hmm, have mm -hmm. a huge number of homelessness, and there's a large number of single individual men um, and women that are homeless in our mm -hmm. county that are trying to make their way back to, oftentimes separated from their children mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm. and trying to make their way back to form family units again. Right. So you may have some people that are in residential, but they might have a job, but they haven't yet acquired enough financial ability to find another place to live? Do you, do you have that kind of person? or We have or people that don't have sustained um, employment a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So they may have had a job and then were you know, laid off, mm -hmm. do not have mm -hmm. health insurance, do not mm -hmm. have other buffering support. Um, we have people that suffer medically, both from mental health illness and from uh, sometimes substance abuse issues as well as other medical physical problems. So you'll see that they may have been able to sustain in good times past where they could go from a job that was paying them for you know maybe a temporary period of time with you know perhaps even below minimum wage mm -hmm. um, to another job. But these days it's become rarer and uh, I would say, you know, more temporary. And so, you know, a lot of times these folks have fallen completely out of the mm -hmm. workforce and are mm -hmm. now on the streets and trying mm -hmm. to sustain. But I also think it's important to talk about the people who may um, be on the brink. Uh, and at mm -hmm. the same mm -hmm. time, um, when we did a survey just recently about the health of our citizens, both in Westchester and Putnam counties, we found the number one need was to deal with stress. So we're not just talking about people who are on the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder. Mm -hmm, we're talking mm -hmm. about an entire population who have been totally, shall we say, stressed out by the last few years. So mental illness is higher. Um, the diagnosis of m certain mental illnesses um, has grown. The awareness that there are a lot mm -hmm. of issues out there that are affecting our health. And it's a long-term strategy to try to roll that back. Um, so, for instance, with United Way and with CHOP, what we're trying to do is holistically help people and refer them to as many different um, uh, avenues of getting help. Mm -hmm. So I think it's uh, something we have to re recognize is not just with the poor, it's not just their problem, mm -hmm. um, it's mm -hmm. all of our problem and it's mm -hmm. also all of our responsibility to make a difference and to change it.
yeah. because it's not hopeless. I mean, there right. really is a lot that we all can do, no matter what socioeconomic structure we're in. And we ha sort of have to look at everyone and say, you're all responsible. We all can do mm -hmm, this together. Mm -hmm. yeah. So some of the people, I'm, you know, I'm thinking about the, the mortgage question. And, yes. and actually, I think what you were saying, too, that it, that it has hit other people, because those are people that have mortgages, have houses, and all of a sudden they've lost their job or whatever else. So the stress has to be incredible. And then obviously the loss of money and where to go and how to deal with the banks. And you know, we, we've had some of those issues up in Albany to try to get advocates to help uh, with people in that situation. Yeah, we have an actual um, program where we've been trying to help people in all stages of foreclosure because mm -hmm, there are a lot mm -hmm. of stages of foreclosure. There are some people who they take that letter that comes from the bank and they kind of put it away in a drawer and they just think it's going to go away or they're going to figure it out. Um, and what we've been trying to do is get them to address it early on. Um, but mm -hmm. you're right, it's happened in every portion of Westchester and Putnam counties where people who have never even thought that they would be one of those people in, who's houses and right. foreclosure mm -hmm. have had to deal with it. Um, and interestingly enough, you know, it's not in the bank's best interest for you to go into foreclosure. Um, so the banks have been working very closely with United Way to try to get people back on track so that they're paying their bills. Mm -hmm. um, the mm -hmm. county governments, both in Westchester and Putnam County, um, are trying desperately to make sure that you can stay in your home because, of course, it helps with property taxes. Right. So we've been working very closely with um, all the municipal uh, governments as well as nonprofits in the community that help people with foreclosure mm -hmm. issues. Are there certain times of the year when there are more needs uh, than others? I mean, you know, we, we have seasons here. Yes, yeah. yes we do. Some, some states don't <laughs> have the same kind of seasons, but we do. And obviously, when it gets cold, and yes. I will get the calls from, from people about the heating issue yep, for absolutely. their house. Um, the health issues can come at any time, and, you know, that can really break a budget. But um, are they, do you see, you know, yeah, absolutely. seasonal we, kinds of you changes? Know, we do, Cindy, and we see um, the homeless uh, increase. Obviously, the homeless situation increases when you get to the very cold weather, um, along with the need for food. Mm -hmm. um, there are folks that are working seasonally as well, and they tend to not be able to support that family during the winter season, and the kids are going hungry to bed and getting up hungry for the morning before they go to school. So mm -hmm. you do see an increase, and we do see a spike of homeless people. We certainly have had in the past in Westchester County people dying um, on the streets from, um, you know, the cold, mm -hmm. and uh, we don't ever want to see that, and we try to reach out and find those people and bring them in doors. Right. Do we have enough doors to bring them in? Any enough beds? Well, in you know our what, counties, we find that our beds are are, are constantly filled. Okay. Um, and we um, we will not turn people away. You know, if we have to, we'll put them in to a general area and bring out the cots for those folks. But we mm -hmm. never want to see anybody um, that we could have helped that's on the street. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, die from frostbite mm -hmm. or other medical conditions. A lot of the people mm -hmm. that have been on the street a long time have medical conditions that they suffer from um, mm -hmm. and are unable to get, you know, help um, to move them forward mm -hmm. medically. So mm -hmm. it's very important that they come indoors. It's very important that they connect with us so we can help them to move forward um, medically and get the help mm -hmm. they need to survive. You know, the DSS census says that there are enough beds um, and that mm -hmm. there are enough places for people to go but uh, those people don't necessarily get there. Uh, and so they have to know about CHOP. They have to mm -hmm. know about other places. That's why calls to United Ways 211 are going up because mm -hmm. people are finally realizing that there is a place that can connect them. You know, government ends, stops at 4.45, 5 o'clock. Right. And we get the most amount of homeless-related calls at around 4.30, 4.45, when the panic is setting in. Um, um, and uh, right. we know the back doors to finding, you know, shelter for someone. Mm -hmm. And as mm -hmm. it gets colder and it gets darker earlier, um, we get a lot of those people who really need to find out where to go. And 211 is open every day. Uh, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so we can take those calls. And what's interesting about the homelessness problem is that there are a lot of agencies out there that are ready and willing to help, thankfully, because we have people who are willing to donate and support mm -hmm. them. That was always the question with, with 
when I was very involved with United Way, uh, which I dearly love the organization, but I remember trying to get people to understand how many services there were just in our county. Not that United Way was running them, but there are all kinds of services. So 211 has kind of pulled it all together. Yes. And, and said, okay, if I have a mental health issue, there, there are 10 agencies in Westchester County that can help out. Is Absolutely. That, is that how that works? Yeah, and more and more people are going to Hudson211.org using their smartphone to find mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You can call 211 any day or you can go on the website. And the interesting thing about Westchester County and Putnam County is we have more nonprofits per square inch than mm -hmm. almost any other place. I mean, depending on who you talk to, you have five to 7,000 nonprofits that are out there. Many of them are social service agencies or social service related, and mm -hmm. it's very difficult to navigate that web. Every town, every area, just like home rule, um, mm -hmm. people want to have their own shelter. They want to have their own food pantry. So we have a network of places where people can get help, but it's very difficult to find them, and that's mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. United Ways 211 has become so popular, mm -hmm. and that's why it's so important um, to, as you do, support the United Way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have. Who's at the other end of the phone? If I yeah, if yeah. I dial two one one yes. from my home phone, yes. Hopefully before five o'clock. <laughs> yeah, well we're open <laughs> until we're <laughs> open every, every day till seven. All right, day. I have the problem on the weekend. Oh, yes. you know, and lots of people have problems weekend. on weekends. Okay, um, who's who's behind the phone? How are you doing this? Well, they're trained professionals. Two one one is actually active throughout the entire country in over ninety three percent of the country. So um, they're trained professionals. There's national standards of who can answer the mm -hmm, phone and mm -hmm. how. Um, we're available in over two hundred and fifty languages because we use a. a translation service that's available in every language you can think of that's covered in Westchester mm -hmm. and Putnam. Mm -hmm. And um, these are people who train for about six weeks before they hit a phone, um, where they learn how to deal with crisis calls because we deal with people who may be suicidal or may have a childcare mm -hmm. crisis who um, need to have an experienced, calm professional on the other line, on the other side of the line. Um, and these are people who literally dedicate every single day to helping people, uh, and they can listen to a call and look up things in a database at the same time. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I know you've had a tour of the center before. Mm -hmm. um, it's incredible to watch how efficiently people, uh, these 211 call specialists work. It's really great. We actually, we use you in the office. We, we probably should have all that information, but you know what? We really don't. And so, uh, you know, we, we often either we call on behalf of a constituent or, or we have our constituents call you to uh, get that kind of help. Agencies so, uh, and constituent services, non-for-profit agencies, about 20 to 30 percent of the calls are referrals mm -hmm, from case mm -hmm. managers at not-for-profit agencies saying, I don't do exactly this, but I know somebody else mm -hmm, does. Mm -hmm. Can you help me find the right agency or uh, program for my mm -hmm. particular constituent? And yeah, I, I know legislators use 211 and, and the population has been using it more and more because we're seeing such a huge explosion of calls, not only during everyday circumstances, but during disasters mm -hmm. like Superstorm Sandy and uh, other situations where people all of a sudden realize 211 is there and they need to call you right. way. You must have been very busy last fall. Uh, yeah, we were open 24-7. And the fall major, before. And the fall before, <laughs> yeah, I really, yeah. yes. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, what happens is that um, uh, the government calls us and says, we need you to be open 24-7. We're usually one of the right. only nonprofits that continuously is open. And um, we, I actually, my staff and I slept on our floor during Hurricane Sandy so that we could be there and make sure that we had enough people to answer the phone. Um, we also used volunteers because we needed, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people to be there to help us. So um, we trained them on the very basics to make sure that we could mm -hmm. get all of those phone calls answered. Yeah, yeah. and we right. too are 365, 24-7 for the shelter. So, you know, so anybody can come in the door. Um, right. you know, to our facility so that we don't have to Do turn it over. Do you have your phone numbers up that'll go up on the I'll the be website? glad to say it again. Okay, and all right. We're always looking okay. for volunteers as well. So it's 914-736-2636. And you can call United Way at 914-997-6700. You can go on our website, uwwp.org, or you can just search United Way, Westchester, United Way, Putnam, and you certainly will get a hold of us. So, you know, if somebody is, is homeless, mm -hmm. 
then Donna's agency would be one of the places that they could be referred to. Absolutely. Right? That's yeah, how that what we works. do is we do it by zip code. We try to figure out the closest right. place for them, but we also hear a transportation issue, so we try mm -hmm. to figure out how to get them there. Um, we work very closely with municipal services, uh, and the, the thing is you'll get three referrals from us. You won't just get one, mm -hmm. and we don't endorse one program over another. We just try to make sure that we give people as many alternatives as possible, because the idea is United Way empowers people to get help. We don't necessarily hold your hand and walk you there. Um, the idea is that people want us to utilize their donor money as m efficiently as possible. And so, you know, it's very important to give them what they need and then say, okay, here's the phone number or here's where the services are. Uh, and in many times, there's more than three referrals. So we tell them to call back if the three that we gave them are not the ones that might help them. Mm -hmm. I just have, you know, going back away, I, I just have such a, a problem. We live in the wealthiest counties in this yes. area yes. and in a very so-called upscaled state I suppose you could say I don't know and we have we still have all these problems and the the economy is getting better but there's still so many people that have been left out of of that goodness and it's always amazing to me and you know I think so many people just don't understand it that are walking around that have great jobs that have a wonderful house to live in, their kids are doing fine, going off to great colleges. I just don't think that they really understand that walking around the streets of White Plains, uh, my community of Osney, Peekskill, anywhere, Rockland County, up into Putnam and Kent, that there are people that have all of these needs. Is you know, it? I, I, there's a reason why our United Way has a Women's Leadership Council. Um, we are having a huge event on December 5th um, but the Women's Leadership Council is a group of women who recognize that other women need to be sort of reminded how important mm -hmm. it is to be philanthropic at home. Mm -hmm. um, that there are a lot of people who have the means to give in Westchester and Putnam counties and who want to help a lot mm -hmm. of people. The reason why some of these problems are, exist is because we do not have enough people in Westchester Putnam who stop and give locally. You know, there are an enormous amount of charities in the world. Um, many of them do not help people directly in Westchester and Putnam counties. And so what we hope is that people will adopt United Way and say, okay, I'm gonna give ho at home. I'm gonna deal with the homeless and I'm gonna deal with the hungry and I'm gonna deal with the people mm -hmm. who need job training and I'm gonna deal with the little kids who need help mm -hmm. by giving to a central depository, the United Way, in my community where I live. And so what we're trying to do is encourage more women to take that leadership role. Not that men don't give, don't get mm -hmm. me wrong, but also because um, the, uh, the statistics show that um, women really do need to be reminded to give more, mm -hmm. and when they do, they're more generous. So um, the idea is that we hope more and more people will join our Women's Leadership Council and that mm -hmm. we'll be able to prompt mm -hmm. more people to give. Because believe it or not, um, when you look across the census of Westchester and Putnam counties, not enough people are giving locally. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I do want to say that we, in, in our local community, I have been astounded and, you know, very grateful for the volunteers that work with us. Um, it is um, certainly in Peekskill there is a, a need and, and there's a, you know, a level of economic concern there and yet you find people giving. But I certainly agree with Naomi that there's a lot that give internationally, not mm -hmm. necessarily from Peekskill but from other you know, areas of Westchester County where those dollars um, could be very well utilized here for the families mm -hmm. that are suffering here. So um, I think that I want to reward those that are volunteering because we do get a lovely number of groups of mm -hmm. volunteers, but we always need more. And I would, um, you know, challenge those that think that there is no need locally in Westchester County to take a look at home first before, um, you know, going abroad. Mm -hmm. And right. every dollar right. counts. It really mm -hmm. is amazing. Mm -hmm. If you look at the local uh, organizations that we support, the the um, the dollars that are being utilized Absolutely. are being utilized extremely well, but the problems exist, and we just don't have enough money to make those problems at least diminish. I don't think we're ever going to get rid of homelessness. I don't mm -hmm. think we're ever going to get rid of hunger. I think it would be sort of naive to say that, but we certainly can make a bigger dent than we are today. Mm -hmm. Right. So Absolutely. we need to, we, there's a lot for us all to do mm -hmm. and uh, we can join in your efforts and, and volunteering or contributing and, you know, for me, legislatively working on legislation that encourages people to have uh, 
breakfasts and schools and so on for kids so that they can learn. You know, we have a we ha we deal with a lot of things in Albany too. So I want to thank you both for coming. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, thank you. lots of good luck as you go forward doing great work in our communities. Thank so you. Thank you very and much. And thank you all for watching. Uh, please, if you have any questions, give me a call in my office, 914-941-1111. Thank you very much.